I'm Steven. I work at Netflix. And about three years ago, we made a bet on GraphQL Federation. Maybe you have to, or maybe you're considering it. Maybe you're skeptical. Wherever you are on your journey, I want to offer you a glimpse of where this road leads. If you pull out your phone and load the Netflix app, open up your homepage, congratulations, you are using federated GraphQL. So what does this mean? The schema behind this is getting updated dozens of times every single day. The graph services, just the, the subgraph layer, is getting deployed hundreds of times per day. And there are billions of GraphQL queries, mutations, and subscriptions hitting this graph every single day. Everything is awesome. Right? OK, time for real talk. Let's talk about the pitfalls. I'm going to categorize these as microservice madness and schema anarchy. What does this mean? Well, when we have a single graph service, a monolithic implementation, life is so simple. Where do we put all the things? Oh, we put it here in our server, because that's where everything goes. But once we have the option to split things up, we have questions. How do we go about doing that? Now, there's an author, Michael Pollan, wrote a book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And he distills nutritional advice down to three simple rules. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Now, wouldn't it be amazing if we could have the same simple guidelines for you know, how do we split up our graph? Let's give it a shot. How about this? Use federation, not too much, <laughs> mostly along team boundaries. What do we mean by this? Well, do use federation. Now, if your company has everything in a monolith and that works for you, that's great. Don't listen to me. But for the rest of us, if you're doing microservices, particularly if you have multiple teams that are contributing to the same API, federation could be a great solution. Now, how do you know if you've gone too far? Do you have more services than you have teams that are contributing to your graph? If so, it's good to just step back and ask, why? Is, is this serving the purposes that we're asking of our microservices? OK, mostly along team boundaries. Microservices are a technical solution to a people problem, and we want to use them to decouple our teams. Then one service per two pizza team is a reasonable place to start. Now, Federation gives us the capability to move the implementation, to split it up as we grow, without breaking the contract with clients. That's the way we've done it at Netflix. We started with a single graph service behind the federated gateway, and then split things out incrementally. And now schema anarchy. When you have a single graph implementation, one team owns the graph, it's easy to have oversight and guarantee consistency of the graph, right? And then if you move to federation, you fear complete anarchy. Anyone can contribute to the graph. They can do whatever they want. But isn't that freedom kind of also the reason that we're doing federation? We want them to be able to iterate quickly, to contribute features, get that out the door. We really want both, don't we? Can we have both? Well, let's take a look at some tools and techniques that can help us to get there. First, a schema working group. Now, I say group. This might be a group of one. Maybe this is just you, and that's great. But your role is to be passionate about GraphQL, APIs, best practices, so that the rest of the engineers at your company don't have to. Because really, they, they shouldn't. It's likely that your company is not a GraphQL company. I work for an entertainment company. Maybe your company does travel or banking. And most of your engineers, frankly, should be worried about what is going to be great for your customers. And so the question is, how do you scale out the passion and expertise of your graph champions, your schema working group? Well, a good place to start 
is with documenting your best practices. How are we going to do pagination across our graph? Let's decide and write it down. How are we going to represent errors in our graph? Write it down. Just writing it down to communicate is a great start. And then as you start to grow the number of contributors, contributors to your graph, something we've started doing at Netflix, we call schema update proposals, SUPs. Now, what, what does this mean? This is basically a way to democratize the process of adding to the graph and allow an opportunity for feedback. So the way we have it is simply a Git repo. And this mirrors the, uh, the current state of, this, of the registry. And you can create a branch, create a PR, get feedback on your schema changes. And then when you're ready, when you're satisfied with feedback, you move forward. And then finally, linting. It's taking those documented best practices. If any of these can be in code, enforced by code, that allows the humans to do what humans do best and make judgment calls. Look at edge cases. Kind of like grammar check, speller check. You know, editors can now look at your style instead of nitpicking your spelling. Because Federation gives you a knob. You don't have to crank it to 11. Start simple, and then crank it up as you go. Do use Federation, but not too much, and mostly along team boundaries. Like butter on your biscuit, a little goes a long way. Thank you.